All right, good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. Hope you're all having a good morning so far. Uh, I have been. Been busy this morning already. And, uh, all right, so, good morning, uh, everybody. Oh, little echo there. Forgot to close my iPad. Oh, me. You would think after how many months of this is, is this now? Four, about four months of this? You'd think I'd have the hang of this by now, but uh, I'm still learning every day. But at least I have my mic on today, so that, maybe that's a sign of some improvement. Uh, if you want to go ahead and be opening your Bibles to Exodus chapter 10, that's where our scripture reading will be. Good morning, Tim and Laquita. Uh, hope you all are having a good morning. Uh, we're also going to look at Malachi chapter 1 uh, in our devotional today. So if you want to have the ribbon there, you can do that. And we'll be going to those passages in just a moment. Good morning, Pat. Good morning, Amanda. Glad you all have tuned in with us today. And good morning, Miss Tracy. And good morning, Katie and Lydia. Um, good, good to see you all this morning. Had such a good time. Uh, fellowshipping with y'all last night at church. Hope y'all are doing well this morning. Good morning, Miss Patsy. Uh, so thankful to have each of you tuned in today for our devotional. Last night we were talking about Moses and our, our class at Greenfield. We've been studying about the heroes of faith that are listed in Hebrews chapter 11. We've made our way down to Moses and talked about the choice that Moses made. He could have lived in, uh, continued to live in Pharaoh's palace in Egypt, and he would have had wealth and power and prestige. But then after his life was over, he would have had nothing. He would have been lost without God. So he chose to, to go out and, and identify with God's people, and he became their leader, and he suffered a great deal uh, in the process of leading God's people out of Egypt and into the promised land, but he gained a heavenly reward. And so he, instead of living for the short term, he lived for the long term. And Moses is a great example to us in that. And I want to go to Moses again this morning in our devotional today. Uh, there's another story from his life that I think is a great example of, of full commitment and devotion to God no matter what the cost may be. As you know, when you turn to, to the book of Exodus, you read about a Pharaoh in Egypt who made it his life's ambition to make life as miserable as he could make it for God's children. But God had other plans. He would made promises to Abraham, and these were Abraham's descendants, and God was going to keep that promise. He promised to lead them out of Egypt. He promised to give them the promised land. He promised to bless them and to make them uh, as innumerable as the uh, grains of sand on the seashore. God's plan for his people did not include slavery. Just as God's plans for us do not include slavery to sin or the death that sin causes. That's not what God wants for us. And God's not going to stop until he has done what he said he would do. So God sent Moses to Pharaoh with some inflexible demands. Let my people go. Let them leave. Let them go to the land that I have promised to give them. What a dramatic occasion it must have been when Moses, after growing up in the palace of Pharaoh for 40 years, he left that palace and, and went out into the wilderness and lived as a shepherd for the next 40 years. And, and how, what a dramatic difference there must have been in Moses when he came back at age 80. Gone were all of the trappings and the dress and the appearance of the Egyptians and replaced with it was the simple... Uh, appearance, the simple attire of a shepherd. And the Egyptians probably looked at Moses and, and thought, what a waste. You know, this man could have been someone powerful in Egypt. Now look at him. He's nothing more than a shepherd. 
But God saw something else when he looked at Moses. He saw a meek and humble man. And uh, Moses stands there in all of the splendor of the imperial Egyptian court. And um, he spoke boldly with confidence. And he gave Pharaoh an order. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go. But Pharaoh wouldn't have it. Pharaoh hardened his heart. And he said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. Well, he shouldn't have spoke so soon. Because God began to bring plagues upon Egypt that would convince Pharaoh that he, he needed to submit to the command of God. And uh, Pharaoh was introduced to the power of Jehovah God in a forceful way. And uh, he started to weaken his stance. And um, by the time you get down to the ninth plague, which was a darkness that came upon all of the face of the land, Pharaoh begins to, uh, to begin to offer a compromise to Moses. And uh, in, in Exodus chapter 10 and verse 24, Pharaoh called to Moses and said, Go, serve the Lord. Only let your flocks and your herds be kept back. Let your little ones also go with you. Okay, he says, you, you can go into the wilderness and you can worship Jehovah God, uh, but leave your flocks and your herds here. So he knew they would have to come back if they left their flocks and herds there. And I love Moses' response to Pharaoh in verse 25. Moses said, You must also give us sacrifices and burnt offerings. How can we go to worship our God if we have nothing to sacrifice? Our livestock also shall go with us. Not a hoof shall be left behind. For we must take some of them to serve the Lord our God, and even we do not know with what we must serve the Lord until we arrive there. I love that statement that Moses made. Not one hoof will be left behind. Moses has no intention to uh, compromise in the least when it comes to fulfilling what God commanded him to do. They're leaving. They're leaving with their wives. They're leaving with their children. They're leaving with their flocks. They're leaving with their herds. They're not leaving anything behind in Egypt because they're not coming back. They are going to the promised land, and nothing is going to stop them. You have to be impressed with Moses for taking that stand and, 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 and being bold in that, that statement. I am going to do what God wants me to do, regardless of what anyone else may say, regardless of what anyone else may do. I'm giving everything I have to God, and I'm not holding anything back. We can take great encouragement from that because the devil still, he tries to offer us the same compromise that Pharaoh offered to Moses. You know, you, you can serve the Lord, but don't go all, you don't have to really, you know, get that into it. You don't really need to read your Bible on a daily basis. You don't need to really worry about prayer on a regular basis. Don't, don't really, uh, you know, you can give a little bit, but don't worry about really giving on a, a, a sacrificial basis. Uh, you can worship occasionally, but don't, don't worry about making that a regular habit in your life. You know, the, the possibilities are endless with this, you know. You, you can go part of the way, just don't go all of the way. And I want to have an attitude like Moses that says, I'm going all the way when I serve God, and I'm not leaving anything behind, and I'm not holding anything back. 
That's why I wanted to, to go over and read this passage from Malachi chapter 1. Because it, it tells us about a time when, when God's people didn't have the, the attitude that Moses had. And you see how God responded to it. We'll start in Malachi chapter 1 verse 6. Malachi says, A son honors his father and a servant his master. If I then am a father, where is my honor? Where is my reverence? Says the Lord of hosts. To you priests who despise my name, yet you say, In what way have we despised your name? You offer defiled food on my altar. But say, In what way have we defiled you? By saying, The temple, table of the Lord is contemptible. Or in other words, The table of the Lord is a burden. It's, it's too much. It's, it's too, uh, too demanding, too costly. Um, and when you offer the blind as a sacrifice, is it not evil? And when you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it then to your governor. Will he be pleased with you? Would he accept it you favorably, says the Lord of hosts? The God's people were giving, but they weren't really giving all. Their sacrifice that they made was defiled, spoiled food. They, they were going to throw it out anyway, so they just took it down and offered it to God. God wanted them to offer their best. They offered the lame and sick. They, they had no other use for it. They were just going to get rid of it anyway. So they gave it to the Lord. And God didn't want the leftovers. He wanted them to give his best, their best. And so this is a, a moment in time when God's people didn't have the attitude of Moses. And you see how disappointed God was with that. So... Here's our encouragement for today. Let's, let's take with us into this day and into this weekend that mindset of Moses that says, not one hoof shall be left behind. I'm going where God wants me to go, to do what God wants me to do, to serve him in the way that he wants me to serve him. And I'm going all the way, and I'm not going to hold anything back, and I'm not going to leave anything behind. Not one hoof shall be left behind. Will you bow with me as we pray together? O oh Lord, our God, our Father in heaven, you are worthy of all praise, for you are all-powerful and all-knowing. You are full of love, and you are perfect in your holiness. We praise you, Lord, with all of our hearts today, and we give you thanks for all of the rich blessings that you have showered upon us. We long, Father, to serve you with our whole heart, just as Moses did. Give us that not one hoof shall be left behind attitude as we serve you, Lord. We pray that our hearts will be full of devotion and commitment to you in everything that we think, say, and do. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus. And we know that he gave himself for us with that same level of devotion, that he went to that cross and died for us, that he was risen again because of his commitment to us, because of his desire for us to be able to go to heaven. We pray, Lord, that we might serve him today with that same devotion and commitment. Please forgive us, Father, of our sins. Strengthen us, Father, against the things that tempt us, and help us, Father, to do your will in our lives today, just as it will be in heaven. We pray for our country and for the world as this virus continues to spread. Please continue to watch over us and protect us. Please be with all of those who are in harm's way. And Lord, we pray for those who are dealing with other sicknesses and other, other uh, trials that they're going through especially mindful today of the family of Brianna Mathis. We cannot even begin to imagine, Lord, the weight of grief that is in their hearts this week. We pray for thy comforting presence, Lord. We pray that you'll wrap your arms around them and give them the comfort that really only you can give. 
And I know, Father, there are many friends and others who have been so devastated by this tragedy. And I pray for each one, Lord, that, that you will be with them and bless them. Please give us this day our daily bread. We know, Father, that whatever this day may bring our way, if you're with us, we'll have more than we need because you are able to do above all that we ask or think. Help us as we strive to put our trust in you, Lord, and help us as we strive to follow in the way that you've put before us. Please deliver us from evil and help us to always remember that thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Good morning, Ellen. Good morning, Eva. I'm glad y'all were able to join in with us today. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in and participating in this devotional. Uh, I love you all so much and just so thankful that we are, are able to have this time together. I hope you have a good day and a good weekend. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Till then, God bless. Love you all.